Hello everyone, my name is Mark and welcome to MDLR Fishing. Today I want to talk to you all about the rod and reel setups that I am using when I go out fishing on the upper Texas Gulf Coast marsh systems. Alright, so you all already know why it is that I use these fishing lines and for those of you that have not seen that video yet, I highly recommend going back into the playlist, checking it out, and then coming back over here. For everyone else, let's continue on. So what I have in front of me is a bait caster and a spinning reel and then two rods. This right here is unconventional on the bait caster side because we're using a light powered casting rod and then also an ultra light powered casting rod. Now for my casting setups, again, I've talked in the previous video why it is that we use the 10 pound. Um, What's different about this setup is that you're not going to find these out there in the big box stores. It is a specialized piece of gear to be able to cast super light lures. Now the reason why I'm using this right here in particular is because the bait caster has a lot more winching power and then the rod itself is going to allow me to, the rod and the line combination is going to allow me to cast lures that are anywhere from 3 16 all the way up to about 3 8 of an ounce in weight. So you're going to be accurate and then that rod is going to be able to bend. The common misconception is that the reason why I don't downgrade in, I'm not going to say downgrade, that's a bad choice of word. The reason why you don't step down to lighter braids or the reason why they don't step down to lighter braids is because of the tendency for the line to bury into the spool whenever the drag is set and the redfish starts taking off. And I'm always going to refer to the redfish because they're by far the hardest pullers that will make you lose your mind and break your heart whenever they get off the line. So that's the common misconception. I have never had any of my fish in line bury itself into the spool and then the line snaps. The main reason is because you've got to set your drag appropriately. This bait caster happens to have, I want to say 17 plus pounds of drag. And on average, I probably got it set to anywhere from seven to 10 pounds worth of drag. Every day before I start, I'm always pulling to make sure that that drag is set. And uh, that way you're not gonna have any issues. If you crank that drag down, because you want to uh, winch that fish in, it's going to fail you. And yes, you're probably going to have the line bury itself into the spool, but if you set it appropriately before you even hook into that fish, you're not going to have that happen to you. And uh, that right there is the casting setup. Uh, another misconception is that if you're going to go from fresh water to salt water, for a lot of you that are uh, landlocked, and you only get to visit the Gulf Coast ever so often. You feel that you need to go out to the sporting goods store and purchase you a more beefier setup. That couldn't be further from the truth. These right here are probably what some of you would consider panfish sized gear. However, because there are no obstructions out there in the marsh, it's just flat and about the only structure that you're gonna encounter is probably marsh grass submerged marsh grass, and then oyster, um, maybe even a crab trap or two. But aside of that, there's really nothing else out there to get wrapped up on. So there's no need to winch these guys in. The average fight is anywhere from like a minute. That's probably the average. And if you catch a really nice size red fish, that's anywhere from 24 inches all the way up to about 30 then your fight will probably last two, maybe three minutes, but that's it. Seven pounds of drag goes a long way. So there's no need to go out and purchase new gear. Uh, just use what you have. And as long as you can present a lure to that fish, then you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever. Now we're gonna step over to the spinning side. On, before I leave the bait casting side, uh, the average bait caster that I'm gonna be using is a 100 maybe all the way up to a 300 but that's very rare but it's going to on average it's going to be a 100 size to like a 250 size bait caster now we jump over to the spinning side there's two series of spinning reels that i use and that's a 500 series which gets mated to a seven foot ultra light power rod 
And then we have right here in front of me a 1000 series spinning reel that made it to a light powered spinning rod. And these right here are all you're gonna need to go out there and tackle the marsh. So the line diameters that I'm using, again, on these rod and reel setups, for the 1000 series, that's gonna be 10 pound, and then for the 500 series, that's five pound. Again, I talked about why it is that I use those line weights in the previous video, but uh, the these right here are more than enough firepower to be able to bring in any of the fish that you're gonna be facing out there in the marsh. If you don't wanna do the fight, if you're a tournament fisherman or something like that, then you probably aren't gonna go with something that is this light in nature and uh, you're gonna opt for the more conventional medium light power on up. But uh, these right here, more than enough firepower again to be able to winch in just about anything. I'm talking from the big brute pulling reds at our upper slot in Texas is 24 to all the way to the top end of the slot is 28 inches. And then I've also been able to bring in black drum which tops out the scale at, uh, gosh, I don't even recall how large and heavy these guys are, but rest assured, they are brute pullers. But these reels and the rods coupled together are more than enough. Uh, one of the things is when the drag engages, uh, before there's too much tension put on the fishing line that I have spooled on these guys, the rod will have the flex as well. So as the rod is starting to flex, that gives your spool, the fishing reel, enough time to engage its drag. And it all works seamlessly and in conjunction with each other so that you're not gonna lose a fish. And then also it will not straighten out any tiny little hooks that you're using because you're using the finesse style gear. So. That is it right there in a nutshell. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. For those of you not subscribed to the channel and you're enjoying this playlist and you wanna to continue to see more, I highly recommend to subscribe and ring that notification bell icon. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.